Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, thanks to the organization for allowing me to present my work. As you can see from the title of this uh, presentation, this work is focused on uh, revealing uh, uh, alteration in the functional connectivity in a mouse model of autism. Now, autism, uh, autism spectrum disorders are a group of neurological and neurodevelopmental disorders, and the factors that cause uh, these uh, disorders uh, are still unknown. It's mm, ASD, so autism spectrum disorders, are probably due to a combination of uh, genetics and non-genetics factors uh, like um, genetics defects or uh, environmental factors and uh, the combination of these uh, factors uh, induce an alteration in the neuronal connectivity so we have uh, an uh, uh, sorry we have uh, an uh, uh, unbalance in the excitatory inhibitory activity but also um, alteration in the circuit plasticity and uh, Probably this uh, alteration in the neuronal connectivity um, underlies the stereotyped behavior characteristic of uh, ASD, mm -hmm. so obsessionality and uh, cognitive impairment. Now, as I said, uh, autism spectrum disorders are a group of disorders, and uh, one of these disorders is the phelan mcdermott syndrome, or PMS. And uh, mm, what causes PMS? Well, PMS is due to a uh, deletion or a mutation in uh, uh, the gene for the shank 3 protein. Now, shank 3 protein is uh, a postsynaptic protein at glutamatergic level, so at glutamatergic, glutamatergic synapse, so at, uh, uh, in the excitatory synapse, and uh, its deletion induces uh, um, several symptoms that can be associated with ASD. So um, to deeply understand the mechanism of um, alteration in the neuronal connectivity in PMS, <laughs> Uh, different transgenic <coughs> mice line were developed, and thanks to this uh, useful uh, um, OTIS model, it has been possible to know that shank free deletion affects synaptic function, so there is uh, an uh, hyper excitability of the membrane, but also excitatory inhibitory balance, and um, the, uh, this balance tend to, um, to, to go tend to, to towards an uh, excitatory uh, an increased inhibi inhibition, but also there is uh, alteration of, so the, of uh, the brain connectivity. And focusing on the brain connectivity, well, um, the, we still don't know, it's, I mean, the brain, the how PMS affects brain connectivity is still an open question because uh, uh, the um, imaging studies conducted so far um, produce a discordant results. So we still don't know if uh, this, um, alteration, this uh, pathology induces an uh, hyper or an hypo connectivity uh, at cortex level. And uh, this is for this, the discordant results uh, are partially due to the principal uh, uh, techniques used for uh, imaging studies, that is uh, the functional magnetic resonance imaging, which, uh, which uh, has the big advantage, advantage to allow whole brain studies, but at the same, at the same time, uh, functional magnetic resonance imaging detects changed in the blood flow, and uh, the blood flow is uh, an indirect parameter of neuronal ex uh, activation. Moreover, to apply fMRIs on uh, mice, it's necessary uh, to have a deep, deep uh, anesthetized condition, so we can detect uh, the neuronal activation of just uh, one brain state. And all these uh, um, points induce us to use another technique that is named uh, white field fluorescence calcium imaging, because calcium imaging have the advantage to uh, allow the detection of, uh, uh, directly the detection of neuronal activity in a specific neuronal population thanks to uh, the use of specific promoters and uh, since uh, calcium is a, a cytoplasmatic second messenger. Uh, the the um, limitation of these techniques, of course, is that uh, you, can, you can detect uh, you you, yeah, you can detect uh, the activity only on superficial cortical layers, but at the same time, you can uh, investigate cortical network across different brain states, so in the awake state, but uh, uh, also in a uh, uh, different level of anesthesia in the same animals and also in the same day, if you want. So uh, this is why we use uh, white field fluorescence microscopy to study, um, to investigate um, the cortical connectivity in uh, our model of uh, PMS, so in uh, uh, shank 3 b heterozygous mice. Heterozygous because uh, we have the deletion of shank 3 b uh, gene only in one allele, 
And uh, what we wanted to know uh, was uh, uh, how this deletion um, induced the alteration of the cortical connectivity in only excitatory neurons. Moreover, we also wanted to, uh, since we know that uh, uh, the mm, cortical connectivity in uh, healthy condition is influenced by the brain state, while well, we wanted to know uh, the brain state dependence of cortical circuit also in this pathological condition. And uh, the last thing was about uh, uh, how the age, the, how change the functional connectivity over time. So the age dependent effects on resting state functional connectivity in this model of autism. So the first thing we, we did has been uh, uh, induce, uh, uh, perform a retroorbital injection of uh, this uh, uh, virus that allowed, the, uh, its name is PHP, and uh, allow us to um, transfect this calcium indicator that is the GCAMP7 FAST in only <coughs> excitatory neuron thanks to this promoter, the CAMP K2 alpha. And uh, after two weeks, um, we were able to detect uh, the uh, calcium signal from the wall uh, um, cortex of uh, a mouse. This is our f raw field of view. But at the same time, we wanted to study the functional connectivity of specific cortical regions. So we applied this um, mask over our field of view to uh, average the calcium signal uh, in function of the uh, cortical regions they belong, it belongs. <laughs> And so this is uh, uh, an example of uh, our, uh, of the uh, cortical activity recorded on the whale, cor on the whale cortex in the awake state. And here you can see how the different cortical regions works during uh, two seconds of uh, registration. And this preprocessing allowed us to, um, I mean, it's, it was important to evaluate uh, if uh, uh, different cortical regions were part of the same functional networks. So we run uh, this analysis, a uh, hierarchical cluster analysis, to investigate uh, the uh, clusterization of the cortical regions in uh, wild type uh, and uh, uh, shank tree mice, so in the healthy condition or in the pathological condition. What we, what we obtained has been this uh, uh, dendrogram of clusterization in which we have two clusters uh, in the wild type mice. Uh, the first one is characterized by somatosensory uh, cortis of nose and mouth. The other two are characterized by several cortical regions like uh, uh, and the uh, motor um, primary and secondary motor cortex and retrosprenial cortex. The most important result of this, the result of this lies, is slide is um, about the comparison between wild type and Chantry B mice because uh, even if we have three clusters also in the uh, pathological condition, while well, these three clusters are characterized by different cortical regions. So we have the barrefield cortex, but also the visual cortex that pa are part of a different functional network. And so this means that uh, in the awake, in, um, I mean, in uh, uh, the awake cortical communi communication schemes are different in healthy and chantry B mice. And uh, this result led us to another question. Is the functional connectivity alteration uh, brain state dependent, I mean, is uh, this alteration uh, always also in uh, another brain state? So, yes, uh, of course. In the previous one, uh, it is a single, a single hemisphere or double hemisphere? Double hemisphere. Double hemisphere. So all the uh, cortical regions, all yeah. the, the whole the, the uh, brain cortex. And so, um, so we use it isoforane to induce two different uh, um, level of, to, to <coughs> investigate two different level of anesthesia, the deep and the light anesthesia. And uh, first of all, we um, evaluate, we, mm, we wanted to be sure that uh, uh, these two level of anesthesia were the same for both the genotypes uh, uh, mice we, we had. So we evaluated the up state and then down state duration in uh, both wild type and chantry B mice. Wild type mice, so the healthy mice are in black and the uh, chantry B mice are in red. And uh, what we can see is that uh, uh, there is no difference in the up state or in the down state duration uh, in for uh, the same level of anesthesia, but there are significant, significant difference if we pass from deep anesthesia to the light level of anesthesia. And so once we uh, were sure that uh, uh, we, we were in the same level of anesthesia for both the genotypes, we uh, analyzed the clusterization of, uh, uh, of uh, both the light level of anesthesia and the deep level of anesthesia. Now, um, 
This slice is, is full of information, but uh, uh, we should focus on uh, the comparison between wild type and shunt tree mice for the single level of anesthesia. So here in uh, the light level of anesthesia, we have uh, uh, three clusters and uh, uh, also in, uh, in both wild type and shunt tree mice. And the uh, uh, cortical regions that characterize these three clusters are the same for uh, uh, both the genotypes. If we move to uh, the deep level of anesthesia, well, also here we have uh, four clusters, but they are the same for both wild type and shunt tree mice. And that's this result uh, led us to a conclusion that the alterations of the con connectivity cluster in uh, shunt tree mice are brain state dependent. So the, the, the consecutive question was about uh, uh, what caused this uh, alteration of the functional network in the awake state. And so we uh, analyzed the absolute level, uh, absolute value of functional connectivity uh, between wild type and shunt tree mice. So we um, just um, performed a subtraction of the functional connectivity values uh, in the, in the shunt tree B from those of the wild type. And uh, uh, these are uh, so um, matrix of uh, um, cortical functional connectivity, but they are uh, um, evaluated as difference between these two genotypes. So if the color is blue, uh, it's meaning that uh, there is an, an hyperconnectivity in the shunt tree B mice, while if the color is red, there is an, an hyperconnectivity in uh, uh, wild type mice. What we can say is that uh, uh, there is um, a different level of significance here, but uh, uh, what we can say is that we can see, sorry, is that uh, uh, somatosensory regions uh, in the shunt tree B mice has have uh, 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 alterated functional connectivity. And uh, these results led us to, mm, I mean, we asked if uh, uh, this alteration was due to a stronger hyper, uh, intra or interconnectivity, um, in, inter or intra hemispheric connectivity. So we average the values of uh, functional connectivity for both the intra hemispheric connectivity and for the intra hemispheric connectivity. And uh, here you can see that uh, there is a global activation hyperconnectivity in shunt tree B. And there is also this uh, predominant intra hemispheric connectivity in healthy mice that is absent in uh, uh, shunt tree B mice. So uh, after these results, we uh, move to the light level of anesthesia to see if the difference were the same or uh, uh, if uh, in there were difference. I mean, and um, mm, you can see that uh, the color is all flat and the uh, functional connectivity gap between uh, shunt tree B and wild type is reduced because uh, all the color is uh, tend to be white. So tend to have no difference. And uh, if we analyze the inter and intra hemispheric connectivity, well, also here there is uh, a decrease in the hyperconnectivity in shunt tree B but uh, this predominant intrahemispheric connectivity in uh, healthy mice persists. And uh, after that, that, if we move uh, to the deep level of anesthesia, here, surprisingly, uh, the functional connectivity gap between shunt tree B and uh, the healthy mice, uh, well, tend to have an opposite trend. And uh, if uh, we analyze the level of intra and intrahemispheric connectivity, we can see that there is a um, leveling of uh, all the values uh, uh, in both wild type and shunt tree B mice. So these, uh, these results led us to a conclusion that is the greater the complexity of the brain state, the greater the hyperconnectivity in autistic mice. And uh, um, once we obtained these results, we also asked if uh, uh, there were difference uh, across time. So we uh, com compared two different time points. One was uh, in the young adult age, and you already saw the results of the young adult age in the, last in the past slides. But uh, we also evaluated uh, uh, the same, uh, we also performed the same analysis in another time point that was uh, at postnatal post day uh, 90. We compared them, and uh, you can see that uh, um, the abnormal functional connectivity in the barrier cortex and in the somatosensory cortex uh, persists in uh, awake uh, in shunt tree B mice, 
and uh, if we analyze the uh, level of intra and interhemispheric connectivity, well, uh, uh, also this uh, hyperconnectivity of chunk 3B uh, persists at P90. And uh, moreover, yes, of course, there is uh, also this strong predominant uh, um, hyperconnectivity um, hyper in the, um, the intra-hemispheric connectivity of chunk 3B that there wasn't at P45. Once we move uh, to the light level of anesthesia, here uh, the functional connectivity gap between chunk 3B and wild type increase uh, over time. So uh, there is uh, this um, uh, significant difference in the, in the connectivity in both uh, intra and interhemispheric connectivity at P90 that it wasn't at P45. And uh, if we move to the deep level of anesthesia as expected from uh, uh, the, um, the results of uh, P45, where the, there is uh, also P90, there is um, uh, leveling of uh, all the values uh, for both the intra and inter-hemispheric connectivity for both the genotypes. So um, these uh, results led us to another conclusion that is uh, that Chantry B heterozygote mice uh, hyperconnectivity does not decrease with age, is, uh, uh, is stable, and the functional connectivity difference are consolidated at P19. Moreover, also as uh, for uh, P45, so in the young, in the young adult age, uh, the connectivity gap increase as the brain state increase. And so summarizing uh, all the results uh, we, we had, uh, well, we can say that the Chantry B heterozygous mice are characterized by a different functional network in the awake state that involves principally uh, barrier fluid cortex and visual cortex. Uh, moreover, the functional connectivity gap between wild type and Chantry B uh, mice uh, is brain state dependent, and the hyperconnectivity of uh, both intra and interhemispheric connectivity is, uh, um, is stable over time. So at the end, uh, I would like to thanks to all the person, pe people that are working on this project, uh, and uh, of course, uh, thanks for your attention. <laughs>